This video series was made possible by Eric Schaefer Guitars, Luther's Mercantile International, and Stumac. Welcome back to the shop, friends. In the last episode, we closed the sound box. Today, we will be adding binding, purfling, and cut the mortise for the neck. To trim the soundboard and back edges flush with the sides, I used my router and a flush cut bit. I began by marking the direction of the router with chalk. This is a reminder to run the router downhill through the grain. If the router was used uphill, tear out would be more likely to occur. I also cut down to the waist with my dovetail saw to prevent tear out at that location. This operation could be accomplished in a variety of ways, but the flush cut bit makes short work of the overhang. Next, I sanded the sides using a handheld spindle sander. This spindle sander is made specifically for this task. When bending the sides, it often lifts the grain in areas and leaves some undulations. The sander removed the high spots, leaving a nice smooth surface. You'll also notice I made a carriage to hold the sound box while sanding. It's difficult to hold the sound box in a vise because of its shape. The carriage is lined with carpet and did a good job. Before cutting the channels for the binding and purfling, I put on a coat of true oil around the edges of the soundboard. This helps prevent little fuzzies from forming from the router bit. It also helps prevent the glue from staining the light colored surface. For cutting the channels, I use my Makita handheld router and the router binding jig supplied by Luther's Mercantile International. This jig is comprised of a carriage to level the surface of the guitar and a carriage to allow the router to move up and down and running across the surface of the guitar. Remember, the guitar is not square and each surface has either curves or a radius. This process works really well. I could easily make an entire video of this jig and how it's used. To attach the plastic binding and the fiber purfling, I used a special tape that was supplied by Stumac. This tape has good adhesion properties but does not pull the grain of the wood out easily. Taping it on first, then gluing it takes the pucker factor out of getting in a hurry with the glue drying too fast. The only joint I was concerned with is at the end wedge. It would look ugly if done improperly. The joint at the neck will be hidden. To glue it, I use water thin super glue. It only takes a drop between the tape joints to glue it together. Once the tape was removed, I added a little more glue to any dry spots. I left the binding and purfling a little proud and scraped it level with the wood surface using my card scraper and sanding blocks. I'm super pleased with the result. Look at those black, white, black curls. Now for the neck mortise. This would be pretty difficult without the LMI neck cutting jig. The jig holds the sound box safely and firmly in line with the router. The router is guided by the jig to cut the correct dimensions of the mortise. It's critical for the mortise to be centered in the sound box, otherwise the neck of the guitar would be offset and make final setup very difficult. I use a straight cut router bit in my DeWalt plunge router. In the future, I may try using a dovetail bit. 
the process would be mostly the same with the exception of using a different bit. In the next episode, we will build the neck. We're getting super close to completing this build, and I can't wait for you to hear this guitar sing. See you then.